Right here we have a Cadillac CT4V Blackwing. Quick nomenclature explanation. Blackwing did refer to an all new twin turbo V8 that Cadillac developed. That engine went into one car, the CT6V. That engine had a very short lifespan, and Blackwing now refers to a trim level instead of the engine. So we have a CT4V Blackwing and a CT5V Blackwing. The CT4V Blackwing, this one right here, effectively replaces the ATSV, whereas the CTSV was replaced by the bigger brother CT5V Blackwing. The CT4V and CT5V still exist, but they're more of the mid-tier sporty model. So Blackwing, what you need to understand is that's the top-tier performance-oriented track-focused driver's top-tier V sedan now. Does that make sense? Hopefully. It's a little confusing, but Blackwing means it's the coolest one. This one here as the CT4V Blackwing does have some carryover uh, components from the ATS-V. It still has a 3.6 liter twin turbocharged V6 with a little bit more power. This one now makes 472 horsepower and 445 pound-feet of torque. It can be optioned with a six-speed manual transmission as standard, a Tremec six-speed, which this one has, and I love it, or you can get the 10-speed automatic transmission. It's rear-wheel drive only. For the manual transmission, you get titanium connecting rods to help it rev a little bit quicker. It also has rev match downshifts and no lift shifting for the manual transmission. This is one of the few sporty sedans in the world that you can still buy brand new with a manual transmission. And I really do like this one with a manual. Rear wheel drive only, magnetic ride dampers. Zero to 60 for the auto is just under four seconds. With the manual, it's just a little bit over four seconds because obviously the manual will be a little bit slower in a straight line than a quick shifting 10 speed automatic transmission. In terms of exterior styling, this Blackwing looks awesome. So the paint is called electric blue, which to my eyes looks exactly like rapid blue that you'd find on a C8 Corvette. And spending a week driving this around, every time I look at it in the parking lot, taking pictures, videos, and seeing it in the driveway, I am like 99.99% set that I wanna do rapid blue on a C8 Z06. But this paint looks awesome. It's eye-catching. I got a lot of compliments. People at work going, is that the blue Cadillac? Is that yours in the parking lot? Or people just saying that blue looks awesome. Contrasted with all the blackout grill and the carbon fiber front pieces. So this has both carbon fiber packages and it brings carbon fiber dive planes. We've got canards up front, full carbon front splitters, side skirts, rear diffuser, big rear lip on that trunk, quad exhaust tips. It is only badged as a Cadillac V model though. There isn't like Blackwing badges on it. It doesn't really say Blackwing anywhere. So unless you really know what you're looking at with obviously the front canards, it's hard to tell that it's a Blackwing versus the regular V. I don't know why Cadillac did that. It's possible that they already knew customers confused by the fact that Blackwing was an engine and now it's a trim, um, or they're replacing the V or just trying to play off the V, but it's not obvious to you that it's a Blackwing model. We do have these 18 inch kind of satin graphite black finished wheels with bronze brake calipers behind, and then quad exhaust tips, I didn't mention that. It's a really good looking sedan. I am a huge fan of it. With that, let's hop inside. We'll take it for a drive, talk about the interior, what it's like to drive, and lastly, the value. So we are in the middle of winter in Chicago right now, so it's very cold and snowy out. This is on winter tires, but it is fully rear wheel drive. It's a handful, it's still a ton of fun. I have so enjoyed my week driving this Blackwing so far. In terms of the interior, it is a massive, massive step up from the ATS. But is it the best in the segment? I wouldn't say so. It's pretty spacious and comfortable and it's got better materials and the certain key points are really nice. Uh, but if you look at something like an AMG from Mercedes or the BMW M3 or even an Audi RS5, they're gonna be overall a little bit nicer. That being said, there are some really nice touches in here. We've got carbon fiber across the center dash here. We've got some carbon fiber trim on the steering wheel. The seats are great. These are the upgraded ones. They're really nicely bolstered. They look awesome. They're finished in white leather, white and black leather with the red piping. Uh, they've got this cross stitching pattern on them. They've got the V logo embossed on the headrest. We have red seat belts, which always makes the car much sportier. They do actually look really cool uh, in this whole color combo here. 
the seats have a somewhat of a massage setting. It's like a lumbar massage. It kind of just pushes your lumbar in and out. So it's not that fancy. The steering wheel is great. We've got leather covered. We've got a red marker at the 12 o'clock point, heated. The V button here on the left sets up V mode. And then this toggle on the right side here controls your PTM, performance traction management, all the way up to race two, which I'm not gonna use because we're on the street and it's cold, sport, dry, wet, or inactive. So it's a lot easier to, to kind of cycle through these. So in sport mode, it will allow for quite some uh, wheel spin and slip. So the infotainment, the screen does look a little bit small in the middle here, especially compared to some of the other vehicles in the segment now. Everything is going to massive touchscreens. A lot of people commented on it when I posted the picture of the interior. They're like, why is the screen so tiny? And I'm like, okay, I see where you're coming from. Do I mind it? Absolutely not. No complaints whatsoever. It runs wireless CarPlay. I've only been using CarPlay uh, every single time I've been driving this car. It also has Android Auto with a wireless phone charging pad below. And it more than makes up for it with the center digital cluster now, which is, which is great. Uh, the graphics look really cool. It reconfigures when you change mode, presents a ton of information. It's got the uh, tachometer right there in the middle. I've been mainly just using sport mode. When you turn on the rev match, it turns the, the gear indicator uh, to a yellow number too. It works fantastic. So I think that digital cluster is nice with a heads up display. So is the CT4V Blackwing interior the best in the segment? No, I wouldn't argue that. Is it fitting the price tag in a luxury car interior? Yeah, it's got really nice materials, nice touches. The technology works great. And it's got some really nice little trim things that indicate this is the more sporty model. The shifter right here in the middle has a 3D printed metal insert on the top, which is awesome. The shifter is perfectly located. This manual transmission setup is phenomenal. I am a huge fan of it. The clutch is the right weight for daily driving. I was comfortable immediately. The shifter throw is the right length, the weight, the feel of it. It's all great. And we do have rev match downshift, so. Makes you feel like a fantastic driver, even if you're not. <laughs> like, listen to that. You can downshift like that. That's phenomenal. Whew. This thing is pretty potent. That 472 horsepower may not sound like a ton when cars in this segment now are making over 500 horsepower, but it puts it down well and the, the vehicle was set up great. Yes, we've been driving it in the cold and the snow this whole week. It's, uh, it's below freezing right now. And with winter tires on, we still have traction issues sometimes, but it's all controllable, it's handled, it's fine. We got a pretty significant snowstorm earlier in the week and I drove this thing home. I had a ton of fun. I decided to put it into sport mode and play with the PTM and I may or may not have um, slid through some corners and I was just, I was enjoying the car. It took it fine. Then I put everything into snow and ice mode and kind of turned traction onto full and tried to drive it like a responsible individual and it also was fine. Like people seem to make this huge deal out of, oh my God, how can you drive a car that's rear wheel drive in the snow? It's the tires, tires, driver skill, and all these performance traction management systems, the, the electronic protection that the computers and modern technology give you, it'll handle it fine. Just have the right tires because all wheel drive with the wrong tires is just all wheel spin. Like all wheel drive doesn't help you stop or turn. So, um, driving this CT5 or CT4V Blackwing in the snow. I keep calling it the CT5. CT4V Blackwing in the snow, even though it's rear wheel drive, has been absolutely fine. So the highlights for me, <laughs> so the highlights for me, the looks, I think this thing looks phenomenal. I think the manual transmission setup is great. There are very few sports cars out there now that you can still buy with a manual transmission, let alone a sporty sedan. And this is the last send off for a internal combustion only Cadillac V model. That was confirmed that these two black wings would be the end of the twin turbo V6 and the supercharged V8 found in the big brother CT5 V black wing. So it looks, the transmission, it drives great. I haven't gotten to get to the full potential. Um, just in my experience so far, it's manageable size. The powertrain set up really well. The mag ride dampers are always fantastic. Magnetic ride just makes cars better. And I have friends who have gotten to track this or I had an opportunity. I was going to get to go drive the two black wings on a racetrack, but I had a conflict at another event. So I had to pick between the two of them. But my friends who work at GM have driven these on track say this is 
really, really good. The front end grip, it has the most amount of front downforce of any Cadillac model ever with those canards up front, even more than the big brother Blackwing, uh, the CT5V. So those, those are some of the highlights for me. The downside, the engine is, is all right. It, it makes pretty good power. And uh, like when I'm in sport mode with the tr uh, engine sound, you let off, you got some burbles and like cracks and stuff like that, a little rumbling in the background. It doesn't rev crazy high, 6,500-ish RPM is your red line. It makes good torque, a nice flat torque curve, but it's not like a silky smooth inline six or the Alfa Romeo Quadrifoglio V6 that feels like a literal Ferrari engine that they kind of shoved into the sedan. It doesn't have the excitement, the charisma of a naturally aspirated V8 or even the LT4. So that would be a little bit of a complaint, but the manual transmission to me more than makes up for it because paired together, it's great. It's pretty quick. Like I respect how quick this thing is. How does this Blackwing stack up in terms of value compared to the competition? Base price is just under $60,000, and this one as option is seventy-seven dollars and that's pretty well optioned. The competition is priced significantly higher. If you look at a M3 competition that's into the 70s, an RS5 into the 70s, C63, that's eighty dollars The Alfa Romeo Quadrifoglio, yeah, it makes 505 horsepower, but it's $80,000. A lot of those ones that I just listed will make more power, will be faster in a straight line, and maybe have a bit nicer of an interior and a different type of brand prestige. I mean, BMW M cars have a very storied history, obviously, and AMG is AMG, but they're going to cost a lot more. The CT4V Blackwing is able to punch above its weight class. It drives fantastically. I think it looks the best in the segment, especially in this blue paint. The Quadrifoglio is really pretty, but this thing has front canards, <laughs> and I love this blue. And you can get it with a manual transmission. The only other option out there that you can get a manual transmission with would be the BMW M3. And I vastly prefer this Tremec to the manual found in the BMWs. The BMW manuals always feel a little rubbery and just, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of the M3 manual, especially F80 and the new G generation of them. So if you talk about value, I think it's a good value. At 77 grand, you get a almost 500 horsepower, rear wheel drive, manual transmission, mag ride dampers, carbon fiber aero, nice interior, looks awesome. Like that's a good sports sedan. It hits all the check boxes that I would want it to. Um, I never really was interested in the ATS-V. I really didn't have much, it didn't appeal to me. The CT4V Blackwing is a car that after driving it, I'm like, I kind of wish I could own one of these. Like, yeah, I kind of want to own one of these. I need to drive, the CT5V Blackwing, which is a whole other monster. I mean, that is a 668 horsepower supercharged V8 and a bigger vehicle, bigger platform, much higher price tag. But in terms of a driver's car, I, I, this to me seems like the perfect, the perfect combination. Can the engine be more exciting? Yes, made up for it with the manual transmission. I think it looks fantastic in this paint color. I think the interior checks the boxes. Uh, no, no massive complaints about the interior for me um, by my standards and it drives well. I really want to get some time with one of these in the full warmth on sticky Michelin PS4S tires and hopefully on a track. That would be phenomenal. I think that would be a ton of fun to experience one of these and then also hopefully get to compare it more directly with an RS5, a C63, an M3, um, and so for an Alfa Romeo Quadrifoglio. But I really do like this Blackwing. Yes, the name was a little confusing when they first launched it. You're like, wait, it's the model or it's the engine? Does it have a twin turbo V8? No, it's just Blackwing. Oh, okay. What happened to the CT4V? Uh, okay. Anyways, it makes sense now, hopefully. Um, here are my thoughts on the CT4V Blackwing. I really, really, really like this. So make sure you also check out the Living With vlog, which is a more informal behind the scenes, kind of covering my week living with this Blackwing and taking it out in the snow and so forth. Thanks for watching.